Hey, welcome to the Angel Island Zone, welcome to Sonic 3 and Knuckles, my favorite platformer game of all time. Sorry for the short little break between Sonic 2 and Sonic 3, but, you know, stuff happens. Anyways, let's move right along to the Badniks. Obviously, the first zone Badniks are going to be really shitty, and you know, that's okay by me, so let's take a look at him. First up is Monkey Dude. I shit you not, that's his fucking English name. Monkey Dude. Look in your Sonic 3 manual. Anyway, he's just like Coconuts from Sonic 2, you know, he throws coconuts, but this guy only has one, once he throws it, it's fucking useless. We also got Rhino Box, not even worth talking about, he just goes left and right. He sucks. Fuck him. Anyways, we also got Caterkiller Jr., obviously named after Caterkiller from Sonic 1, but they're fucking nothing alike at all, so I don't know why he's called that. I mean, I guess they kind of look like Caterpillars, but whatever. There's also this flower-looking motherfucker who sucks. Whatever, you know, fuck him. Let's just get along with the actual level. So as you can see, the game has a save function now, which is pretty cool. There are four different characters, sort of. There are really three different characters. Sonic and Tails, Sonic Alone, Tails Alone, and Knuckles. And while well, Sonic and Tails and Sonic Alone is pretty much the same thing, Tails and Knuckles, they're legitimately different characters, different abilities. Knuckles is what's, he's really different. I mean, he's got pretty much a whole different game. Like, most of the levels are completely changed, different final boss, anyways. As you can see, this is Knuckles now. He actually hits Super Sonic, knocks the Chaos Emeralds out of him, and takes him away. I think that's the only time anyone has ever fucked Super Sonic up in the entire series. So, as you can see, it looks pretty different, but you know, it's pretty cool. The only real gameplay difference is this apparent now is you this weird, kind of pointless insta-shield thing. But here's something you could do in Sonic 2 that I never got to show off. If you plug in controller into the second port, you can control Tails. One thing you couldn't do in Sonic 2 that you can do in Sonic 3 is as Tails. You can fly. Yeah, you can fly for a pretty decent, like, decently long amount of time, but you do eventually get tired and fall down, because, you know, otherwise you'd be a little overpowered. But something you can do with Sonic and Tails is you can have Sonic jump up and Tails can carry him around, which is pretty cool. Now, if you're wondering how I'm doing this, you might know I can play this with the Xbox 360 controller. I have Sonic hooked up to the left analog stick and Tails hooked up to the D-pad. It's really fucking hard to control. You should try it sometime. But, um... As, as I said, you can control tails if you want, but if you go off screen or just leave them around, like not controlled for long enough, eventually the computer will take over again, so, you know, whatever. It's fine by me. I'm trying not to exploit that carrying feature too much. Now, pretty much all the old power ups return, except the shield's a little different, but, you know, there's. I'll, I'll show you when you get to there. But, uh, now it's time to go in the special stage, and again, different from Sonic 2 and Sonic 1, although the giant rings from Sonic 1 make a return. Uh, just jump in and see what happens. So, here's the final kind of special stage. Obviously, the objective is to get blue spheres. What you really should be doing is circling the blue spheres so they turn into rings. If you just get them normally, they turn into red spheres, you touch the red sphere, you fucking suck. Because obviously, the game told you to get blue spheres. Why do you be trying to get a red one? But anyways, I like these the most out of any special stage. One of the ones in Sonic 2 and Sonic 1, at least, because, um, I don't know. Probably just easier. These ones are easier anyways. The ones later on when you're trying to get the super emeralds and shit, they can be pretty fucking difficult, but for the first first five or so, maybe, they're pretty easy. The first three especially. I played these ones like a million times as a kid, so I haven't pretty much fucking memorized you know how to get the perfect. If you circle them and get them, turn into rings, and then you get all the rings in the level, that's a perfect. You get a perfect, you get 50,000 bonus points, that's an extra life, like you need any more fucking extra lives for this easy ass game, but whatever. If you haven't noticed by now, as time goes on, you get a little faster, like the music's in faster, and you go faster. That makes it pretty stressful, and as a kid, I always get freaked out, like I was worried I was gonna be like going too fast, and then I'd like turn left too early, and then I'd end up, I'd end up fucking going into a red sphere or something. Anyways, it's not too bad, and as you see, Here's the first Chaos Emerald, and would you believe it, the first Emerald's actually green. It's nice for a change. So, and be, be prepared to watch this about two more times, because like Sonic 2, uh, I'm going to have to go in the stressful zone a lot in the first video. It takes forever when you get a perfect, that's a total of 50,000 extra fucking bonus points.
So, there's the special stages. They get a little tedious, but for Super Sonic, it's worth it. So, let's keep on moving along. Now, shortly, I'll be getting the first shield, and what's different about shields in Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles compared to Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 is that there isn't, like, one shield. There's three different kinds of shields. This is the bubble shield. You have this weird kind of bouncing attack, and the other feature is that it lets you breathe underwater forever, but I'm not gonna try and show you that. I mean, it's ridiculous. But, yeah, see, you can do this kind of bouncing attack thing. It's not that useful, but, I mean, it's kind of fun. It lets you get up on some ledges that you couldn't otherwise, but... I'd say it's maybe second best shield. It's only really especially super useful in the second level of Sonic 3, which you'll be seeing in the next video. Now, what's this? You think it's a boss fight or something, but it's really just a cutscene. This weird blue thing sets the whole island on fire. There you go. There goes the stereotypical green level. Now it's, it's, all, it's all on fire. And, okay, so, just like Sonic 2, if you have enough rings, I think it's 20, 25, and you pass, a, like, a star post, you go into a bonus stage, but this isn't for, like, uh, like, for Chaos Emeralds, this is just rings and shields and one-ups, and this is just, this is one of three, as you saw, I just got the fire shield, and I'll talk about that in a minute when I get out of here. As a kid, this was definitely my least favorite of the three, because... You can kind of hear it sometimes, but there's like this energy beam or whatever at the bottom that's slowly moving up, so you have to keep moving up or you'll get thrown out of the special zone. And But it's probably the best one. It's my favorite now, because you can get massive amounts of rings and hella one-ups once you get towards the top. So, uh, yeah. And once you get to the top, obviously, there's the exit. So, here's the other second type of shield, and it's the fire shield. It protects you from all kinds of fire-related attacks, and you have this weird kind of dash forward attack. It is probably the least useful in my opinion, but you know, it's still good. I mean, the shield's better than nothing anyways. Oh god, we're already into the next special stage. So here's the second special stage, and I don't know, once you see one, you've pretty much seen them all, so maybe I'll just speed these all up in later videos. I don't know, it's up to you guys. Do you want to speed these up or you want to watch them? I don't know, maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's up to you, not to me. I relinquish control of the situation to you. Anyways, maybe I can talk about uh, Sonic 2 bonus video. I do intend on doing it. In fact, the only reason I made a Sonic 1 bonus video is so I'd have an excuse to make a Sonic 2 bonus video. But uh, it'd be taking a long time, and I know a lot of people just want me to get along with the Sonic 3. I'm tired of waiting, so I figured maybe I'll just do that. And I'll make the Sonic 2 bonus video between Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. Or where that break would have been if I was playing them separately, I don't know. We'll see. I do intend on doing a Sonic 3 and Sonic Knuckles bonus video as well, so I guess I'll do that. Pretty much when the thread's being wrapped up. Oh god, what am I going to talk about? I have no idea. Oh yeah, I think I uh, end up bouncing into this thing just to show you, you know, what happens if you bounce into it in case you don't know. That happens. You go backwards. Isn't it exciting? Now, sometimes in this stage you get a little like lost and you're not entirely sure where to go next, but it's, it's not too hard to like find your way around, and even if you are lost for a while, it's not like you're really in any danger of losing. You do have an unlimited time limit, you just keep getting faster, but eventually there is like a limit on how fast you can go. And I get a perfect again, but that's probably the last perfect I'm going to get, because I fuck it up in the next special stage, and then I don't even really ever attempt to get a perfect again after that. It's just... It's not worth it. Emeralds themselves are much more important. As you can see, we have the second emerald. It's orange. And... Another extra life from the perfect. If you thought I had a lot of extra lives in Sonic 2, holy shit, you are gonna be fucking... in disbelief at how many extra lives I get at the end of this game. And continues that I'm never gonna use. 